So since posting my last video, uh, I've noticed from various uh, friends and family members that there seems to be a lot of confusion as to how stun guns and stun batons actually work. Uh, mostly, it just seems like a lot of you were disappointed that I was not fatally electrocuted, so I'm sorry, I guess. Now, the confusion mostly seems to stem from the highly impressive and lethal sounding 20 million volts. I mean, if you can get electrocuted by just any outlet in your house, which only has 110 volts, why isn't 20 million volts just instantly lethal? Why doesn't it just fry you on the spot? Well, I'm so glad you didn't ask, because now I can answer the question. Why aren't stun guns and stun batons lethal? So if you ask around about this, uh, you'll probably get some smartass telling you that, oh, it's not the voltage that matters, it's just the amperage, uh, which they probably heard from somewhere else and they can't even explain it any further. Uh, and that's probably not an adequate answer for you anyway, because most likely you've never been taught the difference between voltage and amperage. And it's not a very good answer because it's not even 100% accurate anyway. It's not just the amperage that matters. Voltage does play into the equation but neither voltage nor amperage is enough on its own to be lethal. It takes both of them working together. So then, what is voltage and what is amperage? Well, the best way to explain it is by analogy. You see, getting hit with an electric shock is a lot like getting hit with a solid projectile. With a solid projectile, the mass of the projectile and the speed that it's traveling at are what matter. With an electric shock, it's the voltage and the amperage that matter. The voltage is comparable to the mass, it's the actual hitting power of the shock. Uh, the amperage is comparable to the speed that the projectile is traveling at. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to describe the voltage and the amperage of a stun baton, a car battery, and an electric outlet by comparing them to a bowling ball, an airsoft pellet, and a baseball, respectively. The stun baton is like a bowling ball. It has 20 million volts, which in other words is like a very dense, heavy object. But it only has 4.9 milliamps, which is 0 .0049 of an amp. Less than half of 1% of 1 amp. That's very, very small. Or, using our analogy, very, very slow. So it's like someone took a bowling ball and then placed it gently on your chest at very slow speed. Uh, you'll feel something. And it'll probably be uncomfortable, but not lethal. Gently placing a bowling ball on your chest at a very slow speed is not enough to unleash its full destructive potential. Now similarly, 20 million volts has the capacity to do a lot of damage, but at a measly 4.9 milliamps, the current just isn't strong enough to actually penetrate your body and do a lot of damage. The car battery is exactly the opposite. It has a high amperage, usually a few hundred amps, compared to the 0 .0049 of an amp of the stun baton. Now it's hard to be exact because car battery amperage is measured in amp hours, so it's actually calculated differently over time. But for our crude comparison here, we'll just say it's somewhere in the hundreds, and that is a lot. But it's only 12 volts compared to 20 million volts, and 12 volts obviously is very small. So think of it like the airsoft pellet. An airsoft gun can fire this at a very high speed, but because it's so small and so light, like the measly 12 volts of a car battery, it's just not going to do significant damage at any realistic speed, because the mass is just so small. With the measly 12 volts of the car battery, even the extremely high amperage isn't enough to make this lethally dangerous. So now we get to the electrical outlet, which is like the baseball. Now at 110 volts, that's not super heavy, like the stun baton slash bowling ball is. And the amperage on these is usually either 15 or 20 amps, which is not super fast, like the car battery slash airsoft pellet. 
but the effect would be like someone throwing this baseball at you as hard as they can. It is going to hurt a lot more than having a bowling ball gently placed on you or getting shot with an airsoft pellet. Now getting hit by a baseball can be enough to bruise skin, break bones, or cause concussions, just like getting shocked by an outlet is enough to cause some major havoc on your body. So that's the simplest explanation, but obviously nothing's ever just that simple. And in this case, there is another variable that uh, utterly complicates the analogy. Now, of course, I'm talking about the difference between AC and DC. Uh, the stun baton and the car battery are both direct current, or DC, and the electrical outlet is alternating current, or AC. Now, I'm not going to get into any great detail, but uh, basically, the explanation is this. Direct current is like one steady flow of electricity, and alternating current is like a constant, fast-paced series of electrical pulses. So getting shocked by the stun baton or the car battery is basically like getting hit once, while getting shocked by the outlet is like getting hit by the baseball dozens of times per second. Now just to be thorough in my explanation, both AC and DC shocks can cause uh, burns, muscle spasms, and other similar symptoms, but those pulses from alternating current are much, much worse for your heart. A shock from an AC current can actually cause your heart to try to match the pace of the electricity, which can cause your heart to overload and then stop. And that's actually the leading cause of death by electric shock. Now a shock by direct current is actually much more likely to just cause your muscles to spasm and contract, which is what makes them so useful for things like stun guns. So now you have the basic info on why I didn't die during the stun baton test and also why, if you're in the market for a stun baton, you'll see why a claim of 20 million volts maybe isn't really as awesome as it sounds. So that's it for now. Once again, I am just so deeply sorry that I didn't die during the last video, but hey, you never know. Maybe I'll die in the next one. If you want to stay in the loop and make sure you don't miss that, make sure that you like, comment, or subscribe. Have fun and stay safe out there.